Hey friends, welcome back. So if you haven't had blood work or labs or a physical in the past 18 months or 24 months, you might wanna keep watching this video because we're gonna talk about sort of the five to seven essential blood tests that you should request next time you go to a physician. And what inspired me to sort of make this video is I was talking with my neighbor friend the other day. She had, her father had a heart attack and I think it was late 50s or mid 50s. And so she was concerned for herself. She seems pretty healthy, she's in her 30s. We'll say her name is Martha, okay? And she was like, look, I haven't been to the doctor in a long time. Like, what should I run? And this is exactly what I said to her. And I will link below our blood work cheat sheet. We have a full masterclass, a full course that will walk you through all of these parameters and markers and explain to you the values, what to do if they're high, if they're low, how to improve them and all that. But let's just dive right into it, okay? You haven't been to the doctor and you're like, look, I just wanna be healthy. I, I'm just, I wanna screen for every few years just to make sure everything's good, right? Now, blood work is not essential. Just like your healthcare insurance is not essential. You don't need car insurance to drive. But if you get in an accident without car insurance, you're gonna wish that you had it. You're going to wish too that you had blood work if you say develop cancer and you didn't know it and it's metastasized all over your body, right? So it's a good $200 investment every 18 to 24 months. Okay, now in this case, because Martha's father had a heart attack, he's fine now, he's healthy, he's doing great. I did suggest to her a few different tests related to cardiometabolic health, okay? Now, number one, what I suggest is looking at her blood viscosity. So I'm just gonna put blood viscosity. So within that bucket, and we've talked about this at length, ferritin, iron, we have hemoglobin, hematocrit, and RDW, okay? So I'm just gonna put every FE for iron, so everything related to iron. Again, ferritin, iron, TIBC, all of that. Then we're gonna put uh, hemoglobin, so H, C, uh, or hematocrit HCT uh, and hemoglobin HGB, okay? Uh, and then you could also do RDW, okay? So again, these are very standard, very standard, but oftentimes, especially in postmenopausal women and middle-aged men, these parameters related to blood viscosity are quite high, okay? So what this means and could indicate, it, and it'll give you a better insight about the thickness and the viscosity of your blood. Remember, heart disease is not just a manifestation of elevated blood levels of cholesterol. Heart disease and their sheer stress within the blood can create atherosclerosis. So that's why knowing your blood viscosity is helpful and this is just a very simple set of four or five tests that can give you that insight. Now the next thing that I wanted to look at uh, is lipids. But first, focusing on the triglycerides. Very important. A lot of people are focused on lowering their LDL cholesterol and they really don't know what their blood triglyceride level is. It's important that you know both your fasted and your non-fasted triglycerides. Everything, by the way, that I'm mentioning are super cheap, my friends, okay? So we started talking about heart health. She said, well, what about you know, cholesterol? I should be aware of that. And I said, no, no, no. This is what you wanna focus on in addition to triglycerides is your ApoB, ApoB to ApoA1 ratio, okay? Now, much more sensitive and specific to looking at the overall atherogenic potential of your lipids, their overall atherogenic risk, okay? Now you might say, well, Mike, what are the values? Tell me exactly where they should be. This video would be an hour long if we broke down every value of all of this. Okay, I'm just giving you a good overview. I think you should work with your doctor. Download the blood work cheat sheet that's linked below. If you want more about every little value and nuances and context and patterns, we have the blood work masterclass. I'll link it below, okay? But really important to not just focus on LDL cholesterol, but to look at the triglycerides, ApoB to A1 ratio. Now you might be starting to think, you know, he's said, talking about a lot of things here. This is probably gonna get very expensive. As I said earlier, my friends, you can do this for two, less than $200 cash. That's the important thing to know. We're not talking about all these boutique esoteric labs that you have to order and send overseas. No, this is anything you can do locally uh, from a commercial, whether it's Quest or LabCorp. Um, the other thing that I'm a huge fan of is, as many of you guys know, you're gonna be like, wait, this sounds like your other videos. The liver function tests, very simple. AST, ALT, GGT, the three liver function tests. A lot of people don't realize that they're on the spectrum to developing cardiometabolic disease that will manifest as a heart attack, that will manifest as a stroke or sudden death, okay? Because insulin resistance shows up first in the liver, my friends. By the time you've developed insulin resistance and your blood glucose is non-fasted or even fasted 180, 200, your liver is filled 
with fat. This is the first thing that happens. I would encourage you to check out a podcast with the late Sarah Hallberg. Unfortunately, she recently passed away. She was interviewed by Peter Atia. We've also had her on our podcast before. Prayers to her family and friends. Uh, she's a great, uh, was a great researcher, a scientist. Uh, she talks a lot about insulin resistance and the physiology there. So definitely check out that episode. I'll link it below. And as we've talked about on the show a lot, insulin resistance starts in the liver first, okay? So this is why you need to know those liver function tests. So again, going back to Martha, dad had a heart attack. What should she look at? Her overall metabolic health, because her metabolic health will give us an idea about the future cardiometabolic risk, because heart disease does, you know, it, there is a familial element to that as well. Uh, but, but again, once your liver is filled up with fat, then your blood sugar levels start to go awry, okay? Now, we wanted to look for overall, uh, we're gonna look at in inflammation. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna put that there. So a lot of people are like, yeah, I wanna look at my interleukin-6 and TNF-alpha. Look, you don't need to go down and spend tons of money on those parameters, but you do wanna look at your HSCRP and your WBC, okay? And you can look at your lymphocytes to neutrophil ratio. But this is gonna give you a pretty good insight uh, into your baseline level of inflammation. Now, remember that C-reactive protein and also ferritin, many of these other biomarkers, are acute phase reactants. So they are going to increase if you get a little cold, if you catch COVID, whatever. If you do a hard workout, they will increase, okay? But if your white blood cells are quite high and your CRP is high, you need to look under the hood and figure out where is that inflammation coming from? Is it mold? Is it a food sensitivity? Uh, is it chronic inflammation because you're, you're on the spectrum of developing a cardiometabolic disease? You know, you should be aware of that. Okay, so we've gone through a lot of blood-related, uh, inflammatory-related biomarkers. Now, one marker that is related to the immune system indirectly is albumin, okay? One of the ominous markers, we talk about this in the masterclass at length, is a sudden drop in albumin, okay? So you need to... This is something to look at. You know, some people just, their albumin is around 4.8, 4, 4.9, 5. All of a sudden it goes down to 3, 3.8. 3, okay, that's something to sort of look out for. What could be going on? What's driving the shift in the immunoglobulins and proteins in the body? Is there cachexia? Is there some sort of inflammation? Is there some sort of wasting occurring? So that's something to keep an eye on as well. Now, as we finish off here, and there's other electrolytes and there's other things that we're not going to get into today because they're beyond the scope but your overall i'm just going to put meta for metabolism so you know we did talk about triglycerides so that's going to be part of that but i am a fan of most people testing their insulin um, because this is actually a wake-up call for a lot of people they don't realize that their body is compensating they're starting to build up fat in their liver that is reflected by their liver function tests are starting to increase, and then that is being compensated by elevated levels of non-fasting insulin, okay? So for most people, I, I wanna see this around five uh, or under, preferably. Uh, I have, I've worked with clients over the years who are doing everything right on paper. Their insulin is 12, 15, or even higher, okay? So what do we tell them? Well, of course, reduce your carbohydrate intake, work on your circadian biology, and going to bed earlier, getting daylight, and exercise. Now, there's other things we can focus in on, myo-inositol, berberine, omega-3s, you know, things like that, but uh, important to know that. And then, you know, your glucose, so we'll just put a blood glucose here. Now, a one-off blood glucose, not totally concerned about that, but this is where you can get, can get a uh, glucometer, a continuous glucose meter, a CGM, to look at, you know, what's the ebb and flow? What's causing your glucose? There's a lot of heterogeneity in insulin resistance. Circadian rhythm, might be a big issue or a driver for someone and it could be inactivity for another. So it really depends on sort of the etiology of the diabetes. You could also look at LDH. So the LDH, lactate dehydrogenase, um, that is going to increase as you become more, your liver fills up with fat and you become more insulin resistant. So that's something to also look at. Um, now to add on here, I did recommend to Martha, uh, looking at vitamin D, you could do a uh, blood spot, the omega-3 index. So there are some things that you can add on here. But again, if she hadn't gotten labs or you haven't gotten labs in the last five, 10 years, and you're like, I just wanna know where I'm at, right? This is a pretty good overview. And again, there's about 26 to 30 different biomarkers on the first page of the blood work cheat sheet. One thing that came to mind that I wanna share with you in a moment, um, I'll just put it here so I don't forget, is D-H-E-A, okay? 
But these 25, 30 things, really good to look at. If you wanna spend a little bit more money, add on the vitamin D, like I mentioned, add on the omega-3 index, and look at DHA sulfate, okay? Now, I like this because this is going to help give us an idea of sort of indirectly of biologic age and overall vitality. So if your DHA is in the tank, that's not really good for preserving lean muscle mass and hanging on to the fat-free mass that you really want. You want grip strength, you want lower leg strength. The more lean mass you have, and especially if it's exercised and it's earned, right, that is linked with insulin sensitivity. So uh, DHA is, it's going to decline with age. It's like 20 to $30, it's not very expensive. You could add it on here, and I think that's just good measurement. A lot of people are low in DHA and they don't know it, okay? And so this is really easy, easily fixed and, and things like that. But great place to start. Like I said, throw on a few additional things if you'd like, but most of, most of these, if you go and pay cash or work for the doctor, you're talking 189, if you add on DHA and vitamin D, it might be like 249 bucks, okay? So you do this every 18, 24 months. Now, if you're 50 and all of a sudden your albumin drops, you're like, okay, now I know, I remember a conversation, a sudden change in albumin, or a sudden increase in C-reactive protein, or a sudden drop in white blood cells. Now you know, you have, your, you have your norm, and then if something deviates from that, you can know to dig a little bit further and just be ahead of the game, my friend. So hopefully you found this helpful. If you did, thanks for that like button. Share this with a friend or family member who you know, they could be healthier by doing labs every now and again. And uh, let me know what you think in the comments below if you enjoyed this video, and we'll catch you in a future one down the road. Bye now.